Well, the Lord be with you. Well, welcome to St. Bridget's Church here in Kilrush for our celebration of Holy Communion on this, the first Sunday in Lent. This is also my first Sunday worshipping here in Kilrush and it's a beautiful church as you can see and it is uh, a day in which we remember Christ's 40 days in the wilderness at this beginning of Lent. In our readings from Genesis we will be hearing about the rainbow and how God reminds himself when he sees a rainbow about his covenant of love with his people and from our gospel we will also be reminded about the extent of that love that God has through Jesus when in the desert he was with the wild animals and the angels waited upon him. So before we begin we just still our minds and hearts and when we worship God we'll be using the Book of Common Prayer, beginning on page 201. And we start with the Collect for Purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord, Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy on us and write these your laws in our hearts. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to intercede for us in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may walk in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for this, the first Sunday in Lent. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ fasted forty days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, yet without sin, Give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your Spirit, and as you know our weakness, so may, may we know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a collect for Lent. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading from Genesis will be read by Joyce. The Old Testament reading is taken from Genesis chapter 9, 8 to 17. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. 
I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is a sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I've set my bow in the clouds and shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, a bow shall is seen in the clouds. I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and the water shall never again become flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all the flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In our reading of the Psalms, we hear Emma reading from Psalm 25. Psalm 25, the verses 1 to 9. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. But let the treacherous be shamed and frustrated. Make me to know your ways, O Lord and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you have I hoped all the day long. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions, but think on me in your goodness, O Lord, according to your steadfast love. Gracious and upright is the Lord, Therefore shall he teach sinners in the way. He will guide the humble in doing right and teach his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Amen. In our gospel reading, we hear from the Gospel of Mark, read by Laura. Hear the Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to Mark, chapter 1, beginning at verse 9. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And it was just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels awaited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come to near. Repent, and believing the good news, this is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be now and forever acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, I wonder how many times you have been reminded to wash your hands at this stage, or to wear a face mask, or to keep your social distance. All of these things are important reminders during this pandemic. And all of us need, need to be reminded of things, to do things from time to time. And indeed, I would say, please feel free, free to remind me about things which I said I would do. Sometimes one forgets and has to be reminded. And I wonder how do you remind yourself of things? Some people use diaries. Um, other people have uh, notes and they use a fridge magnet to attach the note onto the fridge. Uh, other people, and I never quite got this, uh, but I was told that it was common at one point to tie a knot in a handkerchief. Um, I'm not sure if I'd remember why I tied the knot in the handkerchief, but that was a custom I, I understand. And then nowadays, I suppose, uh, there's the, the text alert or there's the, the phone 
to put in an alert and that reminds you that you have something to do, uh, a tablet to take or uh, an appointment to keep or whatever it may be. And then of course there's the old trusty writing on the hand. Uh, that's a, a, one way of uh, reminding yourself. My mother always used to dissuade me from doing that, telling me that I might get blood poisoning. Not quite sure if there's a medical background for that, but I've stopped writing on my hand anyway, um, now that I have a mobile phone. So reminding ourselves seems a, a very human thing. And when we pray, often we, we, we hear that God knows what we are thinking even before we pray. And that's a very reassuring thought. But in the reading from Genesis today, we have an example of God needing to be reminded. Because he says in Genesis that he put the rainbow in the sky to remind him about the covenant of love that he has for us and for every living creature. We heard it read and it said in verse 16 of chapter 9, When the rainbow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. So it seems that God also wants to be reminded about his love of us and his love of every living creature in the whole earth. And that's a lot of love. That's love for you and me, love for every dog and cat, uh, love for every lamb and every, every damselfly, every dragonfly. Uh, that's an incredible amount of love. And last Thursday, as the family of Mrs. Francis Duke were driving to St. Felix Church in Clonigal for her funeral service, they told me that there in the sky was a rainbow reminding them of God's love of Francis, of Alec, of Les, of Valerie, the four grandchildren, the whole family. And that love was visible in that rainbow. And God also inspires us to be personal reminders. And I think our prayers are, in a way, personal reminders to God about God's promise and just a reassurance to ourselves that God really, really understands and hears us and knows what we are thinking. Because we had it in our psalm. And when Emma ran, read from Psalm 25, we heard these words. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions, but think on me in your goodness, O Lord, according to your steadfast love. So it seems sometimes we need reminding also of God's steadfast love, that it extends much further than ourselves. It extends further than the Church of Ireland. It extends further than all of those who follow Jesus Christ. In fact, it encompasses all cultures, all species, and it is for us to understand God very difficult, but it is love for every living creature. And as we read in Genesis about that rainbow, we also read in Mark, in our Gospel, where Laura read for us these words, that Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. And Jesus, it seems to me, is just demonstrating just how comfortable God is with every creature. We sometimes read in the gospel that Jesus was with his friends. Here we say Jesus was with the wild beasts. So just as the rainbow is a reminder for God, let Lent be a reminder for us to believe in the good news. As Laura read in the gospel, 
believe in the good news. That's what Jesus asks us to do, to take Jesus at his word. God loves us so much that he would make any sacrifice to bring us back to him. And unlike most things that seem too good to be true, this divine love is true. It's all around us. We can see it in, in nature, in the love that people have for one another. That is God's love, and it is also in the rainbow. So we just ask one another to accept God's love. Give thanks for that love in you and in every living creature. And especially give thanks for that love every time you see a rainbow. Amen. And so we continue our celebration of Holy Communion on page 205 of the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy, Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, hear the prayers which we offer in faith and love for peace and for your love and salvation to be known throughout this world, which you so wonderfully created. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the one holy, Catholic and apostolic Church, and for the unity of all Christian people, for all who serve and lead in your Church, for bishops, priests, deacons, readers, church wardens, all members of our select vestry, and especially here this parish of St. Bridget in Kilrush. For all your people, especially for pupils, parents and teachers, adapting to homeschooling and remote learning, and for all who are growing in the faith of Christ, that they may, in word and action, pass it on to the next generation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for all who live and work in these communities around Bunclody, Clonigal, Kildavan and Kilrush. Especially praying for all who, whatever the weather, are engaged in farming, outdoor work and lambing especially at this time. And for families and especially those who live alone and for all who are struggling due to this pandemic. For all who are sick in body or in mind, especially for those in nursing homes and hospital, and for those who care for them. We especially pray for all frontline workers, doctors and nurses, cleaners and porters. Protect them, Lord, and help them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all in authority, 
and especially for Michael D. Higgins, our president, and for all who have been entrusted with the responsibility of government in Ireland, in the European Union, and worldwide. By your redeeming love, help all of us to work for peace, justice, and righteousness on this fragile, beautiful planet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of your holy apostles and martyrs and of all your servants departed this life in your faith and fear, we commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to you, Lord God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the peace, as we read in Romans chapter 5, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. Lord, yours is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all things come from you, and of your own we give you. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. In the Book of Common Prayer, we use the third Eucharistic prayer, which begins on page 216. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father, Lord of all creation, we praise you for your goodness and your love. When we turned away, you did not reject us. You came to meet us in your Son, welcomed us as your children, and prepared a table where we might feast with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened wide his arms upon the cross. With love stronger than death, he made the perfect sacrifice for sin. Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, on the night before you died, you came to table with your friends. Taking bread, you gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the bread of life. At the end of supper, you took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the true vine. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Holy Spirit, giver of life, come upon us now. May this bread and wine be to us the body and blood of our Saviour Jesus Christ. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us who know our need of grace, one in Christ, our risen Lord. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed Trinity, with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of thanks and praise and lift our voice to join the song of heaven forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Thanks be to you, our God, for your gift beyond words. Amen, amen, amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God, who has taken away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. body of Christ keep us in eternal life the blood of Christ keep us in eternal life Let us pray. Lord God, you renew us with the living bread from heaven. Nourish our faith, increase our hope, strengthen our love, and enable us to live by every word that proceeds from out of your mouth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your heart and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you and all those you hold in your heart from this day forth and forevermore. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.